Welcome to the Plain English Public Health Weekly Report. I'm Richard Greenland, and today is November 13th, 2020. As always, we start with the COVID-19 statistics. Worldwide, we have over 53.5 million cases and over 1.3 million deaths. In the United States, we have over 11 million cases and nearly 250,000 deaths. Uh, Just like last week, new records were set in the United States and other countries uh, for the number of new cases. Uh, Yesterday, in fact, there were over 160,000 cases in the United States alone. Um, For the month of November, we've already gone over a million cases, and we've barely started the month. In addition to new cases, uh, the United States has also been setting records for hospitalizations um, due to COVID-19. Many hospitals throughout the country um, are either nearing or already beyond capacity. Uh, Depending on the hospital, Reaching capacity could mean a lack of beds, a lack of space in the ICU, um, or a lack of equipment, or even lack of staff to take care of the patients. Speaking of a lack of equipment, we're once again facing a shortage of N95 masks. Manufacturers have increased production significantly, um, but with this surge in COVID-19 cases, hospitals are going through them very quickly. A new study has found that people with suppressed immune systems who get COVID-19 could be contagious for much longer than previously thought, even if they're not showing any symptoms. One patient with leukemia remained infectious for 70 days. Uh, Usually, an otherwise healthy uh, individual will only be contagious for about 8 to 12 days on average. In Europe, A new strain of the virus that causes COVID-19 has been found in infecting minks. Uh, The minks most likely uh, got the virus from humans at first, um, but then the virus mutated and it's now being spread back to humans. Uh, This new strain seems to be identical to prior strains in how contagious it is and how severe symptoms are, but it isn't affected as much by antibodies. Antibodies are not able to neutralize the virus as well. Um, Scientists are worried that that may mean a vaccine won't be quite as effective against it. As mentioned last week, however, uh, we do have a new vaccine in phase one trials uh, that seems to be much more potent than other vaccines. Uh, Time will tell what happens in the virus versus vaccine arms race. In vaccine news, uh, Pfizer's phase three studies show that its COVID-19 vaccine is over 90% effective at preventing infection. Uh, That's amazing, since most public health experts expected it to be around 60 to 70 percent effective for the first vaccine that came out. Um, So as long as people actually get the vaccine when it's available, and as long as it's also effective over the long term, something that we haven't been able to really test yet just because of how new the uh, COVID-19 virus is, um, we should be able to reach herd immunity quickly um, if those things are true. Um, If everything goes smoothly, the first doses of the uh, Pfizer vaccine should be available toward the end of this month or possibly the beginning of December. Those first doses will most likely go to healthcare workers and those with the highest risk of severe severe symptoms. The general public will most likely get vaccines in the spring or possibly summer of 2021, um, depending on how quickly Pfizer is able to mass produce a vaccine and how quickly the other companies are able to get their vaccine um, out on the market. Llama antibodies, called nanobodies, could be the answer to beating COVID-19 and similar diseases in the future. Um, Nanobodies are much more powerful at neutralizing the virus that causes COVID-19, and they're also shelf-stable for a few weeks. Um, They could be formulated into a nasal spray that would attack the virus in the lungs directly. Um, This is all different from what we currently have. Uh, Research is ongoing, but since nanobodies can be bioengineered, they could be used to quickly fight any new strains of coronavirus, like the one I mentioned earlier from the minks, or it could be used to fight any other viral diseases that pop up in the future. Uh, Theoretically, they could be the first line of defense while vaccines are still being developed. If everything pans out, llama nanobodies might be the new super weapon to fight viruses. Again, it's still undergoing a lot of research, but it's looking very promising. The CDC has updated their Thanksgiving guidelines. Uh, Not a lot has changed, and you can check out all the changes um, by clicking on the link down below the video. 
Um, but the gist of the changes is that if there are any gatherings for Thanksgiving, regardless of size, um, that include people who don't normally live with you, so anyone outside your household, um, you, you basically need to consider the risks. Um, first off, uh, you know, check and see if anyone's coming from a known COVID-19 hotspot. That would be a higher risk. Um, also, how long are you going to be gathering? Is it just going to be for a couple hours? Is it going to be for, you know, a couple days? You know, the longer, the, the higher the risk. Um, how closely packed together will everyone be? Um, how likely is it that the attendees um, will come into contact with COVID-19 and possibly become, become infected with it, um, you know, in the few days before the gathering? Um, if someone has recently tested positive for COVID-19, uh, or if they've been exposed to someone who has, they definitely should not come to any gatherings. Um, you know, they should isolate just like in any condition, Thanksgiving or not. Um, also, um, if anyone's showing possible symptoms for COVID-19, it's definitely recommended that they avoid gatherings. Anyone who does gather uh, with those not of their own household should wear a mask anytime they're not eating or drinking. Um, speaking of masks, the CDC has now officially stated that face masks not only protect those around the wearer of the mask, um, but also uh, the, the wearer of the mask themselves. Um, we talked about this in a previous report, um, but now the evidence has become sufficient that the CDC feels comfortable um, officially stating that on their website. Some new studies reinforce what we already knew about where COVID-19 spreads the most. The top four places are restaurants, gyms, hotels, and houses of worship. They are also the most common sites of super spreader events. What they all have in common is that they are places that are typically not very large, but have a lot of people close together. Um, in many cases, there is a higher chance of the virus being spread due to higher rates of breathing, singing, or talking, and a lower chance of wearing masks. Um, I should also mention the, that the restaurants category does include bars. Research, research suggests that enforcing occupancy limits in addition to following the other CDC guidelines um, could help limit the spread of the virus in those places. Recent outbreaks throughout the United States have also been traced to Halloween parties and indoor sporting events. Uh, basically, people aren't following the CDC guidelines and they're getting COVID-19. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> we know that everyone is tired of restrictions. I'm tired of restrictions but we need to keep going. Um, once the vaccine is widely available, we should be able to relax a bit and maybe even go back to a more normal life. Um, like I said earlier, it depends a lot um, on how effective the vaccine is over time, how quickly it's able to be produced and, uh, and also given to people, distributed to people, and also on how many people actually take the vaccine, um, since there does seem to be um, a bit of opposition to the vaccine. Um, so please do your part so we can reduce the cases, hospitalizations, and deaths that we've been seeing. In other news, there is a recall for romaine lettuce due to um, E. coli contamination. Um, there is more uh, information on that down below the video in the link. A new study suggests that skipping breakfast and eating a late dinner may put you at a higher risk for chronic kidney disease. Um, another study shows that those who regularly eat chili peppers have longer lifespans. Uh, this may be due to the peppers are anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-cancer, and blood glucose regulating properties. Thank you for watching the Plain English Public Health Weekly Report for November 13th, 2020. As always, there are many links below the video um, that you can check out for anything that we weren't able to get to or more information about the things that we talked about today. I'm Richard Greenland, and you have a healthy weekend.